Hello. Well, uh, <clears throat> today I'm here to talk about a double feature I saw um, this past weekend, uh, 29th. Uh, uh, <clears throat> it was with the Universal Monster movies. <clears throat> Apologies for that. Uh, and, uh, Last year, I saw a double feature with uh, The Invisible Man and uh, The Wolfman, both of which featured Claude Rains. And this year, it was a uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon and The Phantom of the Opera with Claude Rains. Um, this uh, version, um, from 1943, and uh, this uh, film count in, <clears throat> in uh, 1954, and um, this uh, uh, won, won two Academy Awards. Um, I'll probably list them below as to what they won. Offhand, I believe I know, but I, I know if I say them, I probably would get them wrong, so I'm just going to leave them um, on screen. Um, making this, this the only uh, Universal Monster film to win uh, like an Academy Award uh, like, at all, so that's quite something. Um, this is more of a musical, and... Um, I'm not the biggest fan of musicals myself. I think I've said that before. Um, <clears throat> but this is a fine movie. Um, uh, you know, uh, uh, yeah, this uh, uh, film has uh, uh, like basically two versions of Raoul. Nelson Eddy plays a singer who's with Christine and um, you know he's trying to fight for her affection with Raul uh, played by Edgar Barrier and um, yeah I, it's very odd that they decided to uh, split that character into two characters or make that one character to two it, it just kind of had this unnecessary like you know love triangle um Claude Rains did a very really excellent job as the Phantom, Eric, uh, Eric Claude Anne. Um, and, uh, you know, the, this is one of the ones that sort of like uh, really sh began to show the, uh, the opera stuff more. You know, it was very, uh, very much showed that, uh, A lot of the singing and stuff, uh, which, you know, these days, a lot of people associate the Phantom of the Opera with the Andrew Lloyd Webber play. And then, of course, that film that was made with it uh, by Joel Schumacher. People associate this with uh, that. And I think, in a way, that I'm not going to say that this is the reason for it, but this was one of the early examples of... Um, <clears throat> The Phantom of the Opera uh, being more focused on the music part. You know, and Atoll, I believe, is the character's name that uh, Nelson Eddy plays, a different version of Raoul. Yeah, he's a baritone and he's very, uh, you know, whatever, as he, you know, sings and such. Uh, Christine is a soprano. And, um, you know, at times it seemed like she was a bit off-key. You know, I'm not uh, too huge into music, though I do know, like, what keys and such. And it seems like she was a bit off-key at times. And uh, uh, Nelson Eddy, as he was singing, it kind of seemed like he was just going on and on and on. And it was like, oh, man, is this guy going to eventually take a breath and stop for a moment? Um, must be breathing through his nose quite a bit to keep going on that 
long. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but still. Um, but, you know, um, I really like Claude Rains, though I know a lot of people do complain about the, you know, disfigurement of his face and such, and, um, but, especially when the mask is, uh, you know, off, it can be seen as a bit, uh, odd uh, of sorts, but, you know, all in all, it's a fine film. Uh, Nelson Eddy does a, or, uh, Nelson Eddy, Edgar Barrier, uh, does a fine job as, uh, you know, uh, Raul. Um, and overall, it is the, g the gist of the Phantom. Um, but, you know, there were things that changed, you know, such as how um, Eric is, you know, how he becomes the Phantom and how, you know, like in the book and the 1925 film, it's already established he's already been the Phantom, like, for a long time. Here, it's just been not that long ago uh, since the film began that this happened and yeah um gets acid in his face um, and it's really only one side that he obviously covers um facing what he takes off the mask it's like goes all, like all the way down there but it seems to be a big thing like you know a lot of the phantoms anymore it's like you know scarring on this face and it's not completely accurate to like the book, how it's described, or uh, like you know, Chaney on it. He's really like deformed and frightening. Um, but uh, oh, again, overall, it's a good film. And uh, this was nice to see on the big screen. And this was the um, second film. And um, it's that, and then. This film, uh, Creature from the Black Lagoon, um, was the first and um, stars uh, Richard Carlson as uh, David, a leading scientist, with uh, his fiance Kay, played by Julie Adams. You know, they go to the Amazon uh, to see about a missing link between, you know, possibly man and fish, about being able to maybe if something be able to breathe underwater as they and then also walk on land um you know and then there's the creature and uh, Richard Denning is also in the episode plays a um, man who's also infatuated with Kay and there's a bit of a love triangle of sorts though you know Kay is more interested in uh, David though uh, Mark or Denning is, is more still very interested in her and um, of course this has the three films set in advertisement for the first three uh, sets they had and this it has all three uh, of the creature films and this is really uh, an excellent film honestly this is a you know, all of them are great and so is this of course um, but this, um, watching these, um, on the big screen was really great. I, um, uh, I always enjoy any time that <clears throat> I'm able to see a classic film like this or this on the big screen, especially with double features, and, uh, I didn't see, uh, The Mummy or The Bride of Frankenstein at the beginning of the month, it was one of those things where, like, last year, you have to choose what you want to, really want to see, which one you really love, and I love all of them, but, you know, I mean, Creature from the Black Lagoon and Phantom of the Opera, I don't know, there's just certain attachments I have to those these two films in particular, a little more than The Mummy with Boris Karloff or The Bride of Frankenstein. Just like I have more of a, had a more of an interest in like uh, seeing The Invisible Man and The Wolfman double feature over Frankenstein and Dracula double feature, though it would have been great to have seen both, but sometimes you have to choose which ones you think 
um, you, like you enjoy the best. And um, I don't mind um, watching these, obviously. I, I loved it. It was a great way to spend three hours in a movie theater um, with various people. Um, and um there's quite a bit of people who saw you know these films um on the big screen just like there were uh quite a bit last year which i think is a good thing because that just shows how popular the universal monsters still are you know like every year these movies keep uh, uh being introduced to younger audiences and um these are the kind of horror films you could show to your kids, you know, and they won't really be good because especially uh, how things are today, but like horror and such, these films won't really frighten kids, at least not as much as perhaps modern day horror films would. So uh, if you're somebody who really enjoys horror films, you know, you're a parent uh, uh, to a child that's pretty young and you like to share your love with horror uh with them universal horror monsters are probably the best kind of horror films you could probably show uh your kid you know it's a great introduction to horror um these are some of the first horror films i ever saw as a kid i know i talk about jaws and how i was six i was you know, gonna watch that <clears throat> and started to, but then I was, you know, freaked out um, by it. But of course, it was years later I was able to uh, just get myself to watch um, those uh, those two films or that film. And um, but by that point, I had pretty much seen all of the Universal Monster films. I of course got you know that big set that I had last, uh, I showed off last year very proper and um and then all those and that creature from the black lagoon the mummy and the invisible man and of course the phantom of the opera and I know they have a blu-ray set that um has gone down in price over years so one day I might um <clears throat> get that just sort of like a the HD upgrade um I know there are like 4K Blu-rays of sets like, like just like the first four had like uh, uh, Frankenstein's monster, like Frankenstein, uh, Dracula, the Invisible Man, and the Wolfman, and then the new ones have uh, the newest one has uh, Bride of Frankenstein, the Mummy, Fate of the Opera, and Creature from the Black Lagoon. Um, I think it would be cool to just have, like, just as they've done before, with now have all of them in a Blu-ray set of all the films. It'd be cool if they did that with 4K, but yeah, it'll probably be a while, probably just seeing how these those sell before they do a big set like that, just like they did before. But one day I'll probably get the all of them on Blu-ray at some point, and then... If I want to upgrade to 4K, I might, you know. It's one of those things, like, with physical media. It's like, you, sometimes you just buy certain movies over and over. And, you know, it is for that the upgrade. Plus, sometimes they have great special features. Sometimes special features, like, on DVDs, for whatever reason, they'll transfer over to, like, Blu-rays and stuff. So, it's always nice to keep the DVDs, even if you get a Blu-ray, because... Blu-rays do sometimes uh, have something that's new, you know, new with them uh, that the DVDs won't have. Uh, with special features, if one <coughs> uh, enjoys those, um, and I do. But you know, uh, of course, the movies are important, but you know, special features are a bonus. And um, yeah, I enjoy seeing these films on the big screen uh just as i do enjoy watching them at home um so uh you know i was able to see them uh in the double feature 
Um, if you've been able to see these or any of the other Universal Monster movies uh, like as a double feature, um, at any point, you know, not just this year or last year, just at any point, you know, I'm sure they've had them uh, re-released here and there. <clears throat> so if you've been able to see them on the big screen, you can let me know. Um, but of course, you know, you can always watch them at home and have a great time that way. Um, yeah, I just uh, love these films. I know I talked a bit more about Phantom of the Opera, but that's because, you know, there's so many versions of Phantom of the Opera that, you know, there's always changes, and I wanted to mention some of those changes. Creature from the Black Lagoon has pretty much just stayed the same. They never really rebooted or remade this film like they have, like, done different adaptations of Frankenstein and Dracula over the years. And then, in 2010, they had the Wolfman remake. Um, which I don't think is all that bad. I think it's actually pretty decent. Um, not necessary, but, you know, Benicio Del Toro and Anthony Hopkins did a fine job in their film, in that film. Um, I believe Emily Blunt is in that, too. Um, but yeah, but people did a fine job in that film. Um, a lot more bloody, you know, because it's modern day and you can do uh, make certain stories more intense and of course you know if somebody's a wolf turns into a wolf it would kind of stand to reason that they would like claw and bite people and stuff whereas before in the, the original wolfman just strangled people which you know the creature uh, does as is the phantom though the creature also has you know claws and, and scratch people and uh, everything of that sort so uh, this was a fun thing to do in the afternoon um, yeah um, anyway let me know if you, you uh, watched in, uh, these films or any of the Universal Monster films and just let me know what you think of them do you enjoy them do you dislike them do you like any better than the others? Do you like them all evenly? Why or why not? Um, so yeah. Um, and that's really all I have. Um, I hope all of you are doing well. Hope your weekend was great. Happy Halloween. And I hope you just have an excellent day. And week. Bye.